This game is T and is not suitable for kids. Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, Marty! And guess. So the bad news for Marty is Maggie Bird is the only girl in this case. Mm. And apparently Marty really doesn't like Maggie Bird. She's so just, I, I'm sick of seeing her. She's like the lot of heart of the newer games that like just keeps <laughs> popping up. Uh, yeah. The good news is, however, there it will be one other character that you can voice just because it's like, well, I mean, it might be just like a, a, a no-name like okay. guard or something. Anyhow. A bailiff. Welcome back. <laughs> a court bailiff in Edgeworth's office. We're still at the beginning of Turnabout Visitor. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot that the, this game works differently. <laughs> I oh, already yeah. forgot. <laughs> we're, we're on a Jock Portsmouth yeah, or Jake's Portsmouth. Oh, whatever. Jock. Are you sure Miss Bird is the only member of security who could have used the master key? There's only one person on the staff this time of night, and tonight she's it. Isn't that right, Miss Bird? That's, um, true. But She's got the blue badger shirt. I like I, her jacket. I like her jacket. Her jacket makes her look like she jumped out of Tron. Oh, she's got Kazooie's feathers on her jacket, too. Oh, okay. But I wasn't able to use the master key at the time of the crime, sir! Wasn't able to? What's that supposed to mean? Yes, yes! Moving on, I'd hate to get sidetracked by something unrelated. What do you mean, unrelated? I want to hear what she has to say, pal! But you can't really trust her not to tell lies. Plus, I hate wasting time. I do like his, I his love hallelujah his... pose. Yeah. It's so good. Hmm, should I hear Miss Bird out? Yeah, get it over with. Not so fast. I too am interested in hearing what Miss Bird has to say. Didn't I just say it'd be a waste of time? We don't need to hear her lies. I'll be the judge of that, Miss Bird, if you please. I discovered that the master key was missing at around 1 a.m., sir. What do you mean by missing? As if it wasn't anywhere in the security booth, sir! The killer must have stolen it! Mr. Portsman, I believe this to be an important piece of testimony, don't you? <sighs> I can't believe that someone like you can be taken in by such words. I'm not lying, sir! Objection! If that's the case, then I'd like to know why you have the Master Key now. I... I don't know. It just reappeared all of a sudden, sir. Ha! A likely story. And where is your proof that the key was stolen to begin with? I bet you just forgot where you put it and then found it again. I never lose things! I can practically guarantee that! With me, if something disappears, it's usually because someone told stole it. Told it? <laughs> yeah, pal! Trust me, you don't want to test just how bad her luck is. Unfortunately, I can't deem this piece of testimony as conclusive. Glad you agree, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, but, but... You still haven't established Maggie's motive for breaking into Mr. Edgeworth's office! Her motive? Didn't we already establish that it was theft? I mean, the culprit clearly went through the bookshelves and at least tried the safe. It is as Mr. Portsman says, Detective. I can't ignore the fact that all the evidence points towards a motive of theft. But I'm done taking blows. It's time to counterattack with a few facts of my own. See, this is the thing that sucks about stopping in the middle, is I always forget what we found. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was only a day ago that we and did it. It doesn't this. matter. Her intent for the messed up shelves on the wiped like, down safe, I'd say fever. Why is he furiously just like, watch some watches? <laughs> Would you like to buy a sundial? <laughs> Not interested. <laughs> I concur that the culprit's motive appears to have been fevery, however. Glad to hear that the great Miles Edgeworth is in agreement with little old me. However, with regard to the investigation of the bookshelves and safe... Hey! Good thinking ask him for my opinion on this matter! Would it be too much for you to allow me to complete a full sentence? <laughs> I mean, if Detective Gumshoe isn't the one who opened the door... Yeah, okay. I thought we had established Detective Gumshoe's innocence pretty thoroughly. It was just a theory, one hypothesis among many possibilities. I mean, I had my doubts about Miss Bird from the very beginning. If that's the case, then why didn't you mention her first? Now, now, don't make that face! See? There goes the truth running the other way! Let's pick up the pace and see if we can catch up to it! I don't think you're catching my drift. Ah, but we are in agreement that the detective isn't the killer, right? If so, then I hope you'll understand when I say... Ugh, I have killer abs! Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was saying! I'm like, why is he just doing that? Just like <laughs> but he like keeps doing it on a weird repeat. <laughs> that said, she's the only one who could have opened your office door. 
This guy's just so bland. Like... <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, he's got the weird lab coat and, like, he's got the abs and the metal, but, like, he's just so blah. What is it? He's just so blah, blah, blah. Don't you think it's a bit early to be jumping to conclusions? Are you saying there's another way to open the door other than the master key? Oh, I get it. Uh, perhaps you had a spare made for someone else? I'll have you know I have never made a spare. So what are you insinuating? Nothing! Guess I should have known better than to suggest that someone like you would. On top of which, she knows our good detective, doesn't she? Is there anyone in this district who hasn't at least heard of Detective Gumshoe? <laughs> point he's practically a celebrity among us prosecutors really i never knew i was so talked about sir we're holding our collective breath you know for when you screw up so badly that you're literally chased off the force wait what is that true mr edgeworth uh, of course not uh, th that's hogwash <laughs> Whew. don't scare me like that i almost had a heart attack there <laughs> poor <laughs> Make it all the more probable she was the one who faked the dying message. By dying message, you mean the bloody letters that spell out Gumshoe? I figured that whoever wrote his name must have just wanted to frame him. And just the act of choosing his name is proof enough that the two knew each other well. Mr. Edgeworth, what are you waiting for? Hurry up and present some evidence. I would love to. But first, we should listen a bit more and digest what he is saying. And press him for more information. But we pressed him on everything. I mean, this leaves. <laughs> it's pretty I, I... obvious. Okay, so let's probably that one. <sighs> All right, so we got the prosecutor's badge. Probably no. not that. Crime scene bullet went for clean for the victim's abdomen. No. It was found at two hundred five. Issued by the victim and believed to be the murder weapon, only one shot fired. Secret safe, each prosecutor has only one in their office, only we know of them. Prints were wiped. Okay. One of the files that was written upon in blood was stolen by the culprit. And then this can open every office door, it was stolen from the security office. So it, it does say that it was stolen. Right. He just doesn't, he's just sliding around. <laughs> So do you see something strange? Even the one who opened the door. This leaves Miss Burr as our prime suspect. She knows the detective. Making it all the more probable that she was the one who faked the dying message. That would be stupid though, because they like each other. Ish. <laughs> at least at the end of Case Free Free. <laughs> yeah, um, what else? Is that the end of it? That was the end of it, yeah. From a messed up, uh, I'd say... Thievery. How does he know that the safe's wiped down? How would she know that the safe even exists? That's true. Objection! Do you wish to continue insisting that Miss Bird was set on stealing something? Why not? It's the truth after all. It was also by your logic that we came to the whole thievery conclusion anyway. That may be, but you must also be aware of the fact that the safe is a secret safe. The existence of which is only privy to prosecutors. Ah! I find it a little hard to believe that a hidden safe was a part of her cunning plan. But, but, uh, but she could have found it by accident while she was turning everything else upside down. I highly doubt that. I'd say the culprit knew exactly what they were looking for. After all, only the bookshelf and the safe were targeted. Yarg! Yeah, even I didn't know about that safe, pal. And that means there's no way Maggie could have known about it either. D uh, then are you proposing that the killer is a prosecutor? Interesting conclusion. That's definitely looking more and more probable. <laughs> Don't eat your metal, dude. Come on. I thought he was eating a corn dog for a second. <laughs> Don't eat corn dogs. They're right here. <laughs> I like your feet better. He's just, he's just stress eating a corn dog. Yeah, like, oh, I didn't notice it was. My goodness, to Coney the Island is open this late. <laughs> Four people working there. What's wrong, prosecutor? Do you have a different suspect in mind now? I, I. Curses! Why? What made you? What's with the angry face all of a sudden? It's, it's all my fault. What do you mean? It's Jim. He knew about the existence of the secret safe. What did you just say? We were partners! 
well, like inseparable conjoined twins. That's why I told him. I filled him in on the secret safes. Then that means... Yeah, I know. I'd only just told him too. Obviously it was wrong of me to tell him. I still can't quite believe it, but the thief who broke into your room was probably Jim. Now he's claiming that the victim was the thief? And you were simply trying to stop him, weren't you? Miss Maggie Bird. Excuse me? I mean, you are a security guard, right? That's your job. But killing is going a bit too far, even in your risky profession. What the? You're still accusing Maggie of the murder? Yes and no. I mean, she'd stumbled upon Jim, who had probably drawn his gun. I get it. It was self-defense, wasn't it? No! I, I couldn't... I, I could never do something like that. Not even as a security guard, sir. Plus, even if he was the thief, he wouldn't have had a key to the office. Which is precisely why he had to steal it, wouldn't you agree? It was Jim who stole the master key. Ah! Pretty impossible for a supposedly stolen key to be here with us unless... Well, unless you retrieved it from Jim after you killed him. Mr. Portsman, are you honestly accusing your own partner of being a thief? I don't want to admit it, but it's the only way for everything else to make sense. He has he no honor. Now then, I think we're done here. The investigation waits for no man. Would you people be so kind as to see yourselves out? You can't kick us out! This is Mr. Edgeworth's office! Ah, uh, but I'm the one who's been assigned to this case. You're all suspects to varying degrees, and therefore ineligible to run the show. Listen, pal! How many times do I have to say this? Maggie can't be the culprit! Detective Gumshoe, calm yourself. But, but sir! We have no choice but to accommodate his request. For now. Haha! <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. At least one of you understands. Now then, uh, if you could remove yourselves from my crime scene, I'd be most grateful. Humph. <laughs> mark my words, Mr. My P crime scene. <laughs> mark my words, Mr. Portsman. We will meet again. If that's a formal request from the legendary prosecutor himself, then I suppose so. Now, don't disappoint me, you hear? To be continued. Yeah, okay. We are so plain more. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> I think that's the weakest of the intermission themes. It's so simple. <laughs> oh well. Okay, I, I couldn't remember how many testimonies he had in a row. March 14th, 4, 18 a.m. Oh! <laughs> no wonder he was eating a corn dog. He was tired. He was so tired and <laughs> It had hungry. coffee in it. <laughs> what? This doesn't even make Pros any sense. <laughs> Pros oh, man. I don't know what I was going with there. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. 12th floor hallway. What is it with that prosecutor? I can't believe how rude he was! It was unbelievable! Please maintain your professionalism, detective. I'm gonna find some real solid evidence proving Maggie's innocence. You'll see, sir. But we've been kicked out of the crime scene, sir. T true So then what now? Looks like my little my life's fallen into yet another gigantic ditch. Do not despair, Miss Bird. We can overcome this as well. There are many other places and things we should be looking into anyway. Eh? Really, sir? For example, this hallway. The linchpin of his argument against Miss Bird is re related to the Master Key. In that case, this hallway is the perfect place to look for more information. Regarding the mystery surrounding my door. Begin investigation, Proxy Secretary's Office, 12th floor, main hallway. Is Maggie I don't want to talk to Maggie today. <laughs> I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking looking crap. Oh, what's underneath there? It's... Ah! Isn't that the missing O-series file, sir? No doubt about it. The bloody letters make it clear as... mark it clear as day. There seem to be a few pages miss missing. Our thief took only what was necessary and left the rest behind. So, what are these zero files about, sir? I guess they've got something worth stealing in them, huh? Not particularly, it's just a collection of court case files. However, the cases within these files are not mine. Huh? They belong to the High Prosecutor that used to occupy my current office. I have my reasons, but let's just say I was charged with keeping them as they were. Then that means the thief must have also wanted the file for a specific reason, right? It would seem so. Only the pages related to that case from ten years ago are missing. I wonder why anyone would care about such an old case. Von Karma stole them. <laughs> I can't let anyone know about TL6, even though I'm already in jail. Yeah. A well-crafted, high-quality sofa for visitors. The stitching is excellent. 
It's the most comfortable sofa pillow, and I keep it exclusively for visitors. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Talk about a luxury waiting area. These babies are also great for napping, you know. You would sleep even out here, detective? In a hallway? Whenever I do, I always wind up dreaming about giving testimony up on the stand. But it always ends the same way, me getting trounced by a lawyer. Isn't that awful? <laughs> Maybe I should give it a try sometime, to envision myself winning, naturally. <laughs> That'd be funny. I think that's all of it. Huh, <laughs> disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have way too much fun with this. <laughs> Gumshoe, you're in my way. And also you can go through him, so there's that. <laughs> Maggie's like, uh, this is pretty weird, guys. <laughs> I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. <laughs> uh, 1202. These four numbers on a number plate alone proclaim this to be my office. Whoops! Hey, these number plates slide right out, sir. They have to be able to take the plate off when a room becomes vacant, you know. Although, the idea that it can so easily be removed is kind of... It would be so funny if it's like, oh, this is just another... Like, there's a prosecutor that's obsessed with Edgeworth, and he has his room exactly like Edgeworth's. <laughs> and then weird. it's not his, like, That's office, actually not his office. And they just change the doors. I don't see any signs of forced entry. And according to the guard, no signs that the lock was picked either, sir. Meaning that the door really was opened with a key. Hmm. Did you happen to ask if any prints were lifted from the doorknob? Apparently, the doorknob's clean as a whistle. Wiped, they think. Whoever this thief is, they did a good job of not leaving any clues behind. Is that a hinge up top? Yeah, it's a door hinge. A, min a minimalist yet classy door made of top quality wood. It's sturdily made, making it near impossible to break in by force. It's almost majestic, sir. I wish I could be as stately as this door. Only Gumshoe would praise a door as something greater than himself. <laughs> Being a detective has its own rewards and a certain virtuous value, I think. If you live up to your full potential, that's a poignant trait that anyone can admire. I see! So you're saying, sir, that me being me is the best thing I can do for everyone? Right. That long pause wasn't exactly reassuring, sir. <laughs> I think that's actually just it. Mm-hmm. Talk to Maggie. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Swanky investigation team. Um, I know you did it. <laughs> um, I was wondering if I may speak with you for a bit concerning this case. I've always been a big fan of the courtroom, but this... This is like a dream. A dream where I'm being cross-examined by the Miles Edgeworth. Edgeworth didn't cross-examine her either of the other two times. That yeah. was Winston Payne yep. and Godot. Yep. I can't let this chance pass me by. I must remember to ask her about the master key. I should jog her memory by showing her my notes through the present button. Have you ever met the victim before? Well, I've seen him a couple of times before when I had to go to Mr. Portsman's office. Mr. Faith was always playing basketball with Mr. Portsman, sir. That sounds like fun! Just once, I'd have loved to play with them. Sounds fun, but the only person ever taking a shot was Mr. Portsman. All Mr. Faith ever did was pass him the ball, sir. On second thought, I don't think I'd fit in at all that well with them. Portsman is terrible. He's the worst. <laughs> Miss Maggie Bird, correct? I take it that you are an acquaintance of the detective? She was under my supervision back when she was still on the force, sir. One day she got caught up in a murder and things started going downhill, so she quit. But I owe a lot to Detective Gumshoe for introducing me to the current employer. Or so I thought, up until a few hours ago. Right before I was about to clock out for the night. You got caught up in this whirlwind of a case, correct? Don't worry. My whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. Since I was six months old when I fell from the ninth floor of my apartment building. I've been hit by all sorts of vehicles, gotten sick from all sorts of foods. Failed at almost every test I've taken, experienced almost every kind of disaster. And now I've even managed to be named a criminal, just when I've become a security guard. That's a lot to go through in one lifetime. I know! And just when I thought I'd finally found happiness! She, she, she missed out on the other two times she got accused of being a criminal as well. Yeah, I wind up getting you and Mr. Gumshoe involved for my bad luck. You don't need to worry about me, Miss Bird. Nor do you need to worry about yourself. I will solve this case and prove your innocence. 
You need to worry about Gumshoe, though. All I ask in your return is for your cooperation. Yes, sir. Mr. Edgeworth, you can count on me. I'll do all I can to help. She looks so weird with that little guy. <laughs> yeah. That's a prosecutor's badge, isn't it? Proves that you're a real prosecutor. Interesting. Despite all appearances, she seems to know more than Gumshoe. With that badge, even I could be a professional prosecutor. Sir, may I please try that on? Just for a little bit. I don't think that would be a very good idea, do you? I guess not. On second thought, they're actually on the same level. I'm just a lowly security guard, so... I'm not sure what I should do with the other than to guard it! <sighs> it's like talking to another gumshoe. They'd be perfect for each other. Yeah, I know. Her face is really weird, though, like that. It's, like, <laughs> it's the side scroll face. <laughs> she was great at that, I don't know, I think. So, when did you discover that the master key was missing? By the time I realized it, I think it was around 1 a.m., sir. And I noticed it was back at around 2.30 a.m. It was just sitting there on the ledge where the security room's little reception window is. But I'm sure that between those two times, it was not just gone, but stolen, sir. Logic. I'm the only one who can think logically. <laughs> Why is it such an important key stored in such an insecure place? Uh, it's not like that, sir. We always keep the key further inside the room away from the window. Always, you say? Except for this time, correct? Well, I admit I was a bit careless, but I had my reasons. I left it out because I was sort of using it at the time. It was after I used it that I left it sitting out on the ledge. She used the master key? What did you mean by you used the master key? Oh, I had to use it to open the door for the prosecutor who had forgotten his key. <laughs> I mean, it's my job as a security guard, right? Ah! What is it? That's right! I just remembered the prosecutor who forgot his key! It was Mr. Portsman, sir! What? Please tell me more, Miss Bird, quickly! Forgetful Mr. Portsman, what a quat! <laughs> it was around 12 a.m. Mr. Portsman had forgotten his office key, so he came down with security. Who is working at 12 a.m. in the prosecutor office? I'm just like such a workaholic, you know? I spent I, I spent all the daytime hours just doing crunches and playing basketball. Now I actually have to do my work. Wow. <laughs> and that's when you loan the master key to him? No way. It's against regulations to loan the master key out to anyone. I walked in with Mr. Portsman to his door, and I walked with him, not in with him, <laughs> and opened the door for him personally, sir. I see. And then, what happened after that? Well, he called for me to come close up his office as he was leaving to go home. That was around 1.30 a.m., I think. So in summary, for the sake of one forgetful prosecutor, you used the master key twice tonight. Talk about suspicious! I doubt you can say that you've never left your keys at home, Detective. I think this calls for a thorough examination of Mr. Portsman's door. Where is Mr. Portsman's door? <laughs> it's just a basketball lying out. It's right next door. <gasps> pain! It's pain! Is everything alright? Uh, yes, sir. If you must know, I weighed myself this morning and I'm finally at 154 pounds. Congratulations, but I was asking about this hallway and this room. Oh, everything's okay, sir. A word of advice, stay focused, or you may start to lose even more weight. <laughs> you can do Payne's voice. It looks like you're in quite the pinch, Mr. Edgeworth! To be sure, a murder within the walls of the prosecutor's office is no trifling matter. We must find, apprehend, and punish the killer accordingly post-haste. Sounds like a messy case you've got on your hands. If you ever feel lost or need some advice, my door is always open! How gracious. I will keep your offer in mind. Who is this guy again? <laughs> okay, first off, Payne's a pretty nice guy. Like, he's yeah. actually like, oh yeah, if you need help, I'd be, I'd be happy to help out. Even if he's not really qualified. Mm. Second, why is Payne here at 4 a.m. in the morning? <laughs> I don't know. I was here to watch a basketball game. <laughs> <laughs> in the hallway. There's only one hoop. <laughs> okay, but like, who, who let, who let prosecutors be like, oh, we need a basketball hoop in the, in the hallway. This is like, this is like <laughs> click clack moo. Oh, we need a diving be board, board for, for the, the pond. ducks. 
<laughs> it's like, oh, it's like, hey, you know what we should really get? A basketball hoop. I, uh, I guess. It's like, they do that. It's like, Edgeworth's like, finally, I can get to my office and get some, like, quiet time, like, studying the case. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Especially since this is literally right next, next to, to his, his office. office. <laughs> He's been gone a month. I freaking hate this basketball. It mocks me. <laughs> Oh wait, hang on, I forgot. Uh, I like how he walks. You can run. I forgot. <laughs> Reading around the rosy <laughs> pocket full of posies. I cannot even imagine Edgeworth doing that. What is a basketball doing here? That's Mr. Portsman's prized possession, sir. I heard he also plays soccer, dodgeball, and even tennis. And not a single one of those sports is suitable to be played in a hallway. <laughs> Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> what is a basketball hoop doing here? Hey, didn't this used to be just outside next to the building a long time ago? So when and why was it moved indoors? I don't remember exactly, but I saw one of the officers drag it up here recently. Drag it? I heard that it wouldn't fit in the elevator, so the poor guy had to bring it himself. All the way up to the 12th floor? <laughs> yeah. Portsmouth is the worst! I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. A minimalist yet classy door made of top quality wood. It's kind of majestic too. Fits in really well with the ambiance of the prosecutor's offices. Even Mr. Portsman seems dignified just because he works behind one of these. Nonsense. A man doesn't become more or less dignified because of where he works. Well, he still seems more dignified than Mr. Payne. Mr. Payne? I suppose custodial work can also be dignified. Wow! <laughs> he thinks Payne is the janitor. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's great. Oh, poor Payne. The door is locked tight. <laughs> I bet the old credit card trick wouldn't work here, huh, Mr. Edgeworth? This is the office of a high prosecutor detective. These doors would be pretty ineffective if the average cat burglar could get through them. Aha! So I guess only a great cat burglar could get in! That must be who our culprit is! Might I advise you to return that conclusion to whatever pawn shop you bought it from? <laughs> He's got some good words. He does. It's Mr. Portsman's personal basketball hoop. I can't believe he put something like this in the hallway of a prosecutor's office. <laughs> but you know, it's actually pretty useful, sir. I haven't gotten lost trying to get to your office since it's been here. How long have I had the same office and yet you still managed to get lost? <laughs> I love Edgeworth's upset voice. Room 1203. I take it that this is Mr. Portsman's office? Yeah, you can't mistake it because of the basketball hoop, sir. Oh, that reminds me. Mr. Portsman had actually wanted room 202 really badly. 1202. 1202. He wanted to be on the second floor, not the 12th. That way he wouldn't have to drag his basketball hoop <laughs> all the way up. <laughs> that way he didn't have to get someone else to drag his basketball hoop up. <laughs> But since you were already occupying him, Mr. Edgeworth, we put him next door, sir. So why was Mr. Portsman so particular about getting room 1202? I'm not sure, but I bet it's because of something like his birthday is December 2nd. Yup, that's gotta be it. I can't think of another reason why. I can think of at least three. Bah, what am I even wasting time thinking about this? Is he a new prosecutor then? <laughs> um, maybe? I want to pick the. I want to see Edgeworth dribble the basketball. And <laughs> we're playing basketball. Otherwise, this is making me think of like, why does DW have a bowling ball in her room? <laughs> Wait, actually, he's doing the chicken dance. <laughs>「It's fun! Okay, okay. Alright, probably the two master keys. <laughs> Logic! Miss Bird, I'm afraid there's a flaw in your story. What? No way, pal! I mean, sir. You said that you locked up Mr. Portsman's office at around 1.30 a.m., correct? However, the master key had already been stolen at that time. Oh, wow! Nothing gets by you, Mr. Edgeworth. You saw that contradiction like a pro! I'd totally forgotten all about that, but thanks to you, I remember it now. You're right! It was around that very same time I realized the master key went missing! And? Well, I'm security guard, sir. I couldn't just admit to losing the master key, could I? So I... I pretended to lock up his room, sir. 
You pretended? Yeah, I used my house key and made it look like I was locking up, sir. So in actuality, you never did relock the door then? Well, I thought that maybe I could go lock it after I found the key. Come to think of it, I guess that door still hasn't been locked up properly. Mr. Portsman's office data jotted we down. We are breaking in now. Break in. Break Steal his basketballs. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Let's look at the doorknob. The door is locked tight. <laughs> I bet old credit card trick wouldn't work. <laughs> That's a problem. Deduce. Maggie said she didn't yep. lock it up. That's annoying, we can't just open the door. There's a contradiction here between reality and the evidence. If what Miss Bird has said is true, then why is the door locked tight? Huh? You know you're right! Miss Bird, are you sure you didn't relock this door? I'm certain of it, sir. And I don't think Mr. Portsman noticed it himself that I hadn't. Which means... What, sir? It either means that he actually does have the key to his office, or that the door Miss Bird opened wasn't this one at all, but a completely different one. She opened a different door? But how can you prove that? There's an easy way to find out. All we need to do is... We need to examine these. Prints on the master key, prints on the doorknob, prints on the number plate. The number plate would make literally no sense. Prints on the doorknob. We examine the fingerprints on the master key. Well, if that's what you want to examine, sir, then that was the very first thing we did. I can tell you that we didn't find any prints other than Maggie's. Poor Edgeworth. That's so brilliant, Mr. Edgeworth. So what can we deduce from that? Um, uh, well... I'll tell you what I deduced. I think this means that the culprit wiped their prints off. Y yes, that's exactly it. I'm glad you were able to come to the same conclusion. However, the more important matter is... Oh wait, that actually is the right one. Oh, whoops. The prints on the number plate, they will tell us all that we need to know. Everything? Really? Like what, sir? Like... Well, for example, and such as... Well, we know for sure that Detective Gumshoe's dinner will only consist of instant noodles. Wow! That was amazing, sir! <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> Yes, that's it. Uh, now then, we should be getting back to doing what is what, and, um, <laughs> yes. Uh, ergo. No. No. That <laughs> Doorknob! <one. laughs> the prints on the doorknob will tell us everything. Hey, you! Yeah, you, pal! Do us a favor and see if you can live from this, okay? Oh, okay. what you can live from this. So, what did you find out? There's no need for such belligerent nostril flaring, detective. Uh, sir, I've only found, uh, only Mr. Portsman's and Mr. Fate's prints on the doorknob. So only two people's prints were found on this, huh? That's pretty decisive. Huh? I'm lost, sir. Thinking logically, a certain other person's prints should be on this knob as well. Oh no. Now Did Maggie prince? just let him into the Edgeworth's office? <laughs> That's possible. <laughs> Take that! Um, we already found Mr. Portsman's and Mr. Fate's prints, sir. Uh, is that so? Well, there should be one other person who left their mark on this. Take that! And why would my prints be on this knob, sir? Are you saying that Mr. Gumshoe had broken into do uh, Dr. Portsman? He is not a doctor. <laughs> Mr. Portsman's office before? What? I've never even been inside that office! What are you saying, sir? Y yes well I was just testing your naivety. I'll answer you straight from now on. I wish you had done that from the very beginning, sir. I'm um, sorry. Take that. Don't you find it odd that the prints of the person who unlocked this door are absent? You mean yes, the door that Miss Bird opened could not have been this one, but a different one. Mr. Portsman's office data updated it. Hmm, what have we here? I won't rest until I've inspected the basketball. <laughs> um, okay. Is this basketball property of Mr. Portsman? Yes, sir. Uh, he's always ready for a match. Basketball, soccer, dodgeball, tennis. It doesn't matter what sport it is, he's game. 
Although I think I'd be a little hard to play tennis with this ball. <laughs> I think it'd be a little hard to play tennis with this ball. <laughs> that isn't the point you should be focusing on, Detective. You're right, sir. Now I know what I should be focusing on. Bad Mr. Portsman. Someone should teach him to clean up his toys after he's done playing. I think we've reached the end of this conversation. Um, I definitely examined the piece of paper underneath the door. What is this? Looks like a scrap of paper. I'll get it, sir. Let's see. Oh, there's something written on it. I brought the three pieces of evidence by just like we talked about on the phone, but it looks like you're out. Guess I'll catch up to you later, buddy. Hmm, it looks like a note from the victim. Yeah, and it's for Mr. Portsman. How many pages were removed from the book? Just a few. Was it like three? Maybe? I, I actually don't remember. It just says pages. Uh, no specific amount. Hmm? What's this? What are you looking at, sir? Oh, hey! How about a game? That's okay, detective. I just found the position of this hoop to be a little off. Hey! You're right, sir! I guess it shifted when someone made a seriously sweet slam dunk. The positioning of the hoop is definitely unnatural. I better take note of this. Basketball hoop. <laughs> We have a whole hoop in our organizer. Oh, he just puts it in his pocket. Oh, it's complete? Oh. Yeah, I knew we could do this in one video. Poking around in this hallway has actually paid off quite handsomely. Huh? But how so, sir? In a variety of different ways, I think it's time we had a little chat with the real culprit in this case. Y you know who the killer is? Wow, Mr. Edgeworth. It's obviously Winston Wayne. Even though he appears in Apollo Justice. <laughs> <laughs> as long as my logic is sound, then yes. The mastermind behind this murder is none other than Mr. Portsman. What? Mr. Portsman? I knew it! That's exactly what my logic senses were telling me to! I suspected it was him from the instant he accused Maggie of being the killer, sir. That is anything but logical. Lady and gentlemen, prepare yourselves. Come what may, it's time to knock out Truth's door. Oh, there's no to be continued there? No, we can keep going. Uh, no, we're at the 37 minute mark. We should probably save and quit. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time. We're gonna take on Mr. Portsman. Um, maybe it'll be one video, maybe it'll be two. I don't know. We'll do it in one recording session, though. Okay, we're, good. It's, I guess the first case isn't as long as I thought. I, it's longer than I thought it'd be. Did you figure it'd be like, oh, it was Maggie. I bet she was the killer. No, you. It's <laughs> I mean, kind of. <laughs> I didn't think we'd have another Edgeworth is the only one investigation who... Edgeworth doesn't need evidence to convict someone. He just says, no, you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you. Anyhow, look forward to that next time. This has been more entertaining than I was expecting the first case to be. Yeah, <laughs> until you we realize that... The Edgeworth chicken dance was so fantastic. <laughs> Anyhow, have a great day and God bless everyone.